Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Starkey Formstead. So I've been doing a little frequency work and research, just seeing how frequencies are affecting the world and everything on it from plants to humans to animals. What I have found is so disturbing, folks, especially for birds and marine populations. And what am I talking about when I say marine? I'm talking about ponds, rivers, the oceans. So my name is Samantha and what I'm fixing to do is prove to you what is causing this. So a lot of people were like, Sam, did you see what's happening off the Florida Keys? And I'm like, no, what's happening off the Florida Keys? Fish are dying, but they're not just dying, folks. They're circling and then they're dying. So very odd. So from everything that I could find in the news, scouring the internet all night long, there are no toxins. There's no heat problem. So it's not global warming, folks. It's not climate change. It's a not lack of food or anything else. They simply don't know what is causing this. On the jewel of Florida's southern coast, a mystery lurks beneath the surface. Fish with the spins, flipping and spinning without stop. In my lifetime of dives, I've never seen any behavior like this from fish at all. Diver Greg Furstenworth first observed it last year and soon learned the fish, including these small tooth sawfish, which can grow up to 16 feet, were dying. Scientists are struggling to understand why. It's unprecedented. They do not spin like this. They do not behave like this. This is not normal behavior at all. That highly unusual behavior has been seen in more than 40 species, according to Florida Fish and Wildlife. Necropsies on dead fish have revealed no sign of a pathogen or bacterial infection. State officials say oxygen levels, water salinity, pH, and temperature are not believed to be the cause, bewildering researchers. Well, I'm not accepting that answer. So I began to dig, and I'm like, okay, God, you've had me running down frequencies for a while now, so let me just see. Has there been anything military or scientific going on in the Florida Keys in the last year? Do you guys want to know what I found? I found new high frequency radar called Codar C Sound HF. It was supposed to be finished early 2024. Okay, so what this is, guys, it is high frequency radars. Um, that are placed on land and it's a little different because the system is going to measure speed and current in real life time. Now you only need one antenna. It sends out the signal and then the signal comes back to the same receiving ascending antenna. Now because of that, right, they're claiming this will minimize environmental disturbances to sensitive areas of the Key West. Now, what I found was that they're working on the five millihertz sound wave or frequency wave. Okay. Uh, I should say frequency wave. I apologize. And when you look at what fish are sensitive to guys, it is low frequencies between all the way down to 0.1 hertz to 20 hertz really affects marine biology badly. Like it will cause them to become confused. They don't know which way to go to find their food. They don't know how to get back to their nest. They don't know which direction to go. In fact, they begin to think what they're hearing is a predator coming at them, causing their cortisol levels to shoot through the roof. Now, if you saw my video yesterday discussing frequency meat and cortisol and CAFO systems, you already know where I'm going with this. Folks, if you eat a lot of wild caught fish, maybe you've noticed something lately that the meat is not of the same consistency as it used to be, or that it's got a foul taste when you're cooking it. And that is due to the dumping of cortisol which is basically the fish in panic mode into the meat of the fish. Now, when you eat that, it has very bad effects on your body, which is why I think so many people are becoming ill. It's not just the fake food that they're feeding us anymore or the plastics that they're trying to turn into a um, 
protein source, folks. It is now the fact that our entire meat supply is being, well, our entire meat supply is coming from animals that are under extreme stress and they're dumping cortisol like crazy into their bloodstreams, which is finding its way into its meat. Then we butcher it, then we eat it, and now we're getting extremely high levels of cortisol. Now, if you're having a lot of problems with your blood sugar, with your digestion, and with things like arthritis, I want you to take a second and look up cortisol and what high levels of cortisol coming into your system will do to your body, the human body. And then I want you to come back to this video. Now, folks, some of you know, I just got through writing a book. Woohoo! So excited, but I've got to get it to the publisher in just a couple of days. And then I have to advertise it. And unfortunately, because I'm a new author, the advertising falls on moi. So if you would like to send anywhere from a dollar to 500, we would be so greatly appreciated, folks, to help us get this book out to the world. Now, if you'd like to put a dedication to a loved one or to a loved animal, you can do so in this book for $500. I have another video on that explaining how it's done, or you can reach out to me and I'll explain it to you. But we need your help, folks, because $7,000 to advertise is a lot of money in this economy. You're dying. These endangered species are basically dying, folks. They don't have any clue, no clue at all. Really? Because here is proof that you have recently put in new, not old, new ones to go along with the ones you already had in place, frequency, so they can watch the tidal waves, right? They wanna learn more about tidal waves and currents. Of course, my very smart daughter goes, isn't that what buoys are for? And I went, you would think, right? But no, we need we need more frequency shooting into our oceans, right? Like that is such a great idea. I mean, surely the fish are not going to have a problem with this, right folks? Seriously? So what I'm fixing to show you is a clip explaining to you about fish, how they hear, how frequency particularly can affect fish. It is a bit longish, please just listen to him because we can't have these discussions unless we understand the science behind it, okay? Because frequency can get really confusing, all right? So I just want you to listen to this quick, quick clip for me, just real quick. And like I said, the big ones can still cause damage because they're enough energy that they can literally bruise or rip tissue. However, where we overlooked it for so long and only in the last decade do these very important studies show that things like migration that may depend on tides or it may depend on uh, how much uh, algae is in the water and maybe they're using the frequencies of the ambient sound in a river and they're figuring out how much of that sound is blocked by each little micro crustacean in the water and that's painting a picture for them and without it they can't figure out where their food is and so we've noticed everything from failed mating behavior to failed uh, attempts at catching prey being you know off by several inches when they try to make a, a strike at something that moved in the water and avoiding prey so this causes a lot of fish to die just from confusion and stress now beyond all of this the part that's more applicable to our fish in our aquariums i would say is the fact that these sounds are stressful. They create cortisols, which are a hormone in fish that then releases things like adrenaline and causes their heart to beat faster. So wild caught fish in studies were found to still be very, very reactive to any sounds they could hear, any vibrations that are not just strictly in the natural world. And even if it is in the natural world, they may still react because in the natural world, that may be the sound of an eagle splashing down to grab a fish. So when we have fish from the wild, their senses are intact and they haven't gotten used to the sounds of captivity. So in captivity, we've studied fish 
for many, many years. That's how we usually studied them for the last 150 years. In fact, in the 1960s, we were able to figure out all these things like the lateral line and the rest of the fish by keeping fish in captivity and hooking up electrodes to their actual organs or to their exterior but in many cases, we actually did surgeries and hooked wires right up to the fish and could see electrical impulses being created by those organs. And they were being sent up the spinal column to the fish's brain. Because fish hear from 0 to 2,000 hertz generally, and humans can hear all the way from 0 to 20,000 hertz, They've evolved a clever way around that, so it doesn't always translate one-to-one -one for the decibels or hertz, and there's not an easy conversion rate for fish, so we simply have to study each species one at a time and then assume that the similarly evolved species that have similar anatomy of their ears and their lateral lines and air bladder which now I've tipped you off to where we're going next, which is the anatomy of hearing in fish. Now that we understand what sound is and how it's working, fish have evolved all these sensory organs all over their body, and most of them have to do with vibrations. And that size is equal to how much energy it is moving. And then it has a frequency, and we measure these frequencies in hertz. Now, hertz are how many of those waves from top to bottom, and then again top to bottom, are going on in a certain amount of time. So, for instance, if you had a wave of sound coming out of a speaker, and there were three of those waves playing every second, that would be three hertz. If you had 10,000 of those waves being played, that would be 10,000 hertz, and we call that high frequency versus low frequency sound. Now, low frequency sound can have a lot of energy. You can still have a 100 decibel sound wave that's only 2 or 3 hertz, but humans wouldn't hear that. It would be something like whales or elephants or fish, in some cases, would be able to hear. Whereas to the higher end of the spectrum, humans can hear about from 0 to 20,000 hertz. And we've kind of created this scale to match for humans. So anywhere from 0 to 20 is where your average adult can start hearing the hertz or, or picking up a high pitch frequency when they do those hearing tests and you hear the, the high pitch buzz or ringing. Well, that is a very high frequency noise, probably 20,000 hertz or something like 15,000 hertz. And over time, we can get damage to our ears and lose that ability. But if you have that same scale, fish are only able to pick up a much smaller section of it. And because they only pick up a much smaller section of it, they actually have a whole lot of tricks up their sleeve with how they evolved to deal with it. But let's finish up talking about sound. And so sound moving through the air, those waves are measured in decibels. And so when we say the volume was intense, it was a loud sound, we can know that that was a lot of energy moving. Now, just like I said, in an explosion, you've got a big shock wave moving, but it may have a very low frequency. It may be very bass oriented, like sound like a thud of a drum. And just like a drum, it's moving air out of its way. Well, underwater, it's also moving molecules and it's like dominoes and it's the sound wave hits those molecules and they hit the next one and hit the next one so as soon as sound hits water you actually lose about 60 decibels right off the top and how many decibels are there why do we call them decibels well decibels are just a unit of sound just like we have the hertz which is the frequency of sound basically within a human range and then we had to extend that later for other uses have you guys seen this this all crazy spinny fish erratic behavior thing going on down there in the last two months the fwc has responded to many reports of this unusual behavior and even fish kills too. And it's just not small fish either. 38 endangered sawfish have washed up and died. Now they tested the fish afterwards and found that 
well, there's no pathogens, there's no bacterial infection. Also, state officials went out and tested the water too, the oxygen in the water, the water salinity, the pH, and the temperatures were all within norms. So they're kind of stumped right now. But recently, the FWC has rescued a small tooth sawfish that was doing that spinny erratic behavior, and they put it in a rehabilitation center to test it to see what's going on. I'm thinking maybe they should start testing the water for, well, drugs. We just had the stories about cocaine sharks and that kind of stuff. So maybe that would make them all act crazy out there too. Either way, I hope they figure it out because we really can't stand to lose more of those endangered sawfish. Let me know what you think below. See you out there. So let me know what you think, guys. Do you think this is some kind of climate change affecting these fish? Or do you think these brand new antennas going up, shooting more frequencies into the water might be affecting the fish? I don't know. Just curious what you think. Remember, make sure you are still subscribed. Like, comment, share this video. The truth has to come out. All these antennas they're putting all over the world, it's not for our benefit. Birds don't like them. Fish don't like them. Turtles don't like them. And now I'm starting to realize that people are also being affected in not positive ways by all of these antennas dotting our landscape. I don't know you guys, but the only way that we're ever gonna fix this is to collectively, globally, love each other, love Jesus, and move ourselves out of their frequency.